My utmost. <laughs> Bitch, you thought I got raptured. <laughs> Not really. Uh, it's uh, late in the day, and I finally got around to my coffee. Wow. That's unusual. <laughs> I forgot all about coffee. I hadn't drank any all day, and was just doing emotionals and writing and doing some housework and going about my day and suddenly it dawned on me, you know, a cup of coffee sounds good. And I thought, coffee, wow, what a neat idea. I should sit down with the Lord and read a devotional too. <laughs> and so here we are. My utmost for His highest. And the Lord is with us. I mean, He's having a cup of coffee. Well, He may not have coffee, but... Maybe wine. <laughs> Appre <clears throat> apprehended by God, if that I may apprehend that for which I also am apprehended. Philippians 3.12 Never choose to be a worker, but when once God has put his call on you, woe be it to you if you turn to the right hand or to the left. Boy, you can say that again. Were it not here... We are not here to work for God because we have chosen to do so, but because God has apprehended us. He's got us. <laughs> There's never any thought of, oh well, I'm not fitted for this, so I'll do something else. What you are to preach is determined by God, not by your own natural inclinations. Keep your soul steadfastly related to God, and remember that you are called not to bear testimony only, but to preach the gospel. Every Christian must testify, but when it comes to the call to preach, there must be an agonizing grip of God's hand on you, your life in the grip of God for that one thing. How many of us are held like that? How real is that in your life? Never water down the Word of God. Preach it in its undiluted sternness. There must be unflinching loyalty to the Word of God. But when you come to personal dealing with your fellow man, remember who you are. Not a special being made up in heaven, but a sinner saved by grace. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, that I may be apprehended for that which I also am apprehended. You know, that's so true that we need to bear in mind that we are not saved by our own personal choice, but that God chose us, that God chose you. And the reason why he did was because he has a purpose for you. He has a plan. He created you. He made you. Oh, you may think you were the byproduct of a man and a woman. <laughs> and a lot of people think so. But the reality is there's three parts to creation. And the last part is God. We get to participate with Him. We don't create life. Life is brought by God. And so, because He created you, designed you, purposed a plan for you, has everything all coordinated so the day would come when suddenly it would hit you like a brick in a head or a bolt of lightning or a sudden gestalt of all the circumstances of your life, that you needed something more than what you could see, touch, and feel, that there was more to life than just me, 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 and I, I, I. When you came to that conclusion, if you didn't have godly parents that raised you up in the Lord, then you discovered that you needed a spiritual dimension in your life that you didn't have, that there was more to this existence than what you saw or experienced, and that there had to be more because when you thought about death, you couldn't picture just a termination and an ending. Or that you looked at yourself and you looked at the world and you saw creation and you couldn't imagine that this all happened accidentally. And you tried many other things, you know, to put some piece together and nothing seemed to fit right. And then one day you decided, hey, you know, I keep hearing all these stories about all I have to do is ask God into my life. All I have to do is call upon the name of the Lord. All I need to do is give Jesus 
an opportunity to reveal himself to me and then if he does I I could believe that maybe he's right and start to move in that direction and see if maybe I needed to be born again that perhaps I needed to discover that God is real and that maybe there's something to this religion called Christianity that all these people seem to believe in but every time I look at it it looks religious to me and you know the day you crossed over from religion to relationship you knew and there was no doubt in your mind is there a doubt today have you done and gone beyond the simple oh God save me to oh God let's save someone else <laughs> the reality is is that you have two hands one is being held by Jesus the other was meant to reach out to someone and that could be a poor analogy or it could be a wonderful one but when you imagine hell and the reality of somebody spending eternity there that you might know someone that you might even have brought with God into life someone that you might even be married to and you imagine that you're saved and they're not and that they could wind up in hell suddenly preaching the gospel becomes a necessity for you becomes a priority becomes a reality that you want to save someone from something not just oh let God bless you oh he's got a wonderful plan for your life no the reality of the gospel is this you are heading for hell and God can save you when he does you will be blessed if he doesn't you might be blessed and you might have the world's riches and when you die the lake of fire is waiting so there is a gospel and it is one that Jesus died for our sins that we might approach God and that we might be forgiven by God and that we might call upon the name of the Lord our God and that we would be saved because in reality Jesus opened a door where we could approach God and have grace meaning he forgives us for our sins but you have to find that and you have to know that and you have to live that and you have to do that because in reality the only reason why someone isn't saved right next door to you is you do you care if you're saved you're not saved for yourself you're saved because God wants to save someone else that's the reality of the gospel that is why Jesus died and God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son not because we should just go on our way but that whosoever would believe in him should not perish they shouldn't there should be no reason there's no excuse for anyone dying without God no excuse it takes full belligerence to not accept Jesus Christ. It takes a complete rebellion against the love of God to not try it and see if God is real. Because he said he would prove himself. Would you share that message with someone? Would you phrase it in your own way, your testimony, and then offer the gospel? I hope so. Because the soul you save might not just be theirs but your own also it's a heavy thing it's a wonderful thing for the gospel for when they do accept the angels rejoice but it's a heavy thing to realize that there's a cost for rejecting what Jesus gave and that was his life and in that the law will come true a life for a life God's life the son of God for the life of the person that rejects him and God will not God our Father will not forgive that rejection of his only begotten son